All right. Uh, we begin again. The devil does not want this out. Uh, this is the second time I've gotten page two and something went wrong. As we continue, and for you it's the first time again, we're looking into holidays. And we're looking into the foundation of holidays. And are they truly Bible? Would it be something that Jesus would want you to be as a born-again Christian? And the fact is, what is absent from Christianity today is no one looks at the history. No one looks at the foundation. And when we look at the foundation, as we did in Mother's Day, weren't you shot? And if you had not viewed that, go back to the Sermon Network. Go back to YouTube and watch the wet cloth of Mother's Day. As we now take the wet cloth to another holiday, February 14th, you call it Valentine's Day. Actually, it was celebrated, as we're going to see, February 15th. But let's look at the truth. Let's look at the foundation of a holiday that can be found in the Christian Bible-believing church. A Baptist church. And let's look at the true meaning of this event. And let's see if it would be something that Jesus would want his bride to be part of as we begin this study. And I ask the Lord to bless this. I ask the Lord to help me to complete this whole thing without interruption. I ask that your heart will be pure and open. Not your mind, your heart. And that God will be elevated and not Satan. I ask this in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. February 14th is an ancient Roman festival. And it's called Luperkilia. Luperkilia. I'm going to have a hard time saying that. But Luperkilia. It's not called Valentine's Day. See, if we give it a new name, we can celebrate it. It's a festival of fertility. The state or quality of being fertile. Oh, that's like Easter. You know, the eggs, the bunny. We'll get into that, Lord willing, hopefully one day. In 496 A.D., the Pope turn Lupercalia into a feast day. 496 A.D. We got a date on this. And actually it's going to be February 15th, 496. Lupercalia is pronounced as a feast day for the boat, from the boat. And what they say is from St. Valentine, who was a Roman monitor in the 3rd century. Now, there are three Valentines. One was a priest, a second was a bishop, and the third is unknown. Now, the Valentine that they claim would perform secret marriages in opposition to Claudius II, who prohibited marriage of young men. Now, isn't that funny for this church? Under a pope, to raise up such a thing that today they violate scriptures, Timothy, and tell their priests not to marry. But they lift up a saint who performed marriages that were illegal by the government, where today the church, the priest, is illegal to be married. But he can have, no, I won't say that. It was a law that young men were not to be married for whatever reason. Like it's a church law, the priests are not to be married. Well, Valentine was arrested by Claudius. Then he would not convert to the Roman gods. Well, that's interesting. Because the Roman gods are the Roman Catholic Church. Refusing to renounce his religion... He was martyred on the date of February 14, 270 A.D. On February 14, after that, young Roman men wrote greetings of affection known as Valentine's. Now that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? That feels, oh, isn't that what we do today? 
But that's not the true foundation of Valentine's. This was in 270 AD. In 496 AD, the Pope turned Lupercalia into a feast day. Not Valentine's Day. There's a difference between Lupercalia and Valentine. They're both days. But the first was called Lupercalia. Later on, the protected innocency and the, and the junk, they change it to Valentine. Nice, sweet little name. That's why we're doing these holidays. So you will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. If you do the truth, for Jesus said, if you will be my disciple, you will love and do the truth. Be ye doers of the word only. I mean, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, James says. Correct me for being wrong there. Sorry. On the 14th century, or in the 14th century, Valentine's Day was associated with love. Oh, isn't that what we do today? Yeah, we come a long way, 14th century. That's after 496 A.D. When Lupercalia, Lupercalia became a feast day by the Pope. In France and England, it was believed birds made it on February 14th. Birds became a symbol of love. Now let's look at scripture, shall we? In Mark chapter 4, verse 4, Jesus, if you have a Bible that in the words of Christ are read, you are going to read red light lettering here. You're going to read the words of God. For God is Jesus, and Jesus is God. John 10, 30. So in the words of God, who is Jesus Christ, telling the parable, he says in verse 4, And it came to pass, as he sold, some fell by the wayside. And the fowls, it was believed on February 14th the birds would mate. Birds became a symbol of love. The fowls of the air came and devoured it up, the sea. Now, in this parable, later on, Jesus is off with his disciples and he explains the parable. Shall we look at what the parable means? Thank you. Verse 14, the same chapter of Mark 4, it says, The sower soweth the word. Oh, it's the gospel. The birds devoured the gospel. Let's keep reading. And these are they by the wayside. Matches verse 4. Where the word is sown. Matches verse 4. But when they have heard, Satan, run back to verse 4, it says, Fowls, Fowls and Satan, cometh immediately and take away the word that was sown in their heart. Now, it's I get mixed up. It's either 1 Corinthians 4.4 4 or 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, where it speaks of Satan as the God of this world who darkens the heart, who does not want people to get this seed, who do not want to hear the, who does not want them to hear the gospel, because else if they receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, they are no more under Satan, but they are under God as a child of God now. But isn't it interesting that this thing has now gone off again? I'll just keep on going. And that when we take such an event that birds become a symbol of love, that Jesus said falls in Matthew, I mean Mark chapter 4, verses 4 and verses 15, that falls are the devil, are devils. So when you take birds as a symbol of love, you're saying Satan and his devils. Where the Bible says, we'll look at later, that God is love. Satan has no love. Satan doesn't know what love is. Satan shows no mercy, shows no grace. 
but God, for the Bible says God is love. And then when you turn around and take an attribute of love and saying it's birds, saying it's Satan, you are turning around saying that Satan is God and God is Satan. Isn't that interesting? You just called God Satan, and you just called Satan God, calling evil good and good evil. I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. But let's keep on going. Shall we? The roots, and I didn't do this, the Valentine's Massacre is a bloody festival, which we'll, we will look at, and it's also associated with murder. It's associated with uh, Valentine being martyred because he wouldn't renounce his religion. It's also associated with Mardi Gras. You know that Roman Catholic feast down in New Orleans? Well, I'll show you in a minute where those two tied in together. And it's amazing, Lupercalia is by the Pope and Mardi Gras is a Roman Catholic holiday and here is a guy who was in a, under a Roman government killed by the Romans for not renouncing his, his religion and going against a Roman rule which still extends to the priest today where you got birds who Jesus said is Satan taking the word of God out. But we'll keep going. Lupercalia is celebrated February 15th. And on the Roman calendar, it is springtime. Love is in the air. The birds and the bees. You know. It was a very joyous occasion, Lupercalia was. And here's what would happen. You would have two youths. And a sacrifice of a dog and goat. Well, a dog in the Bible is an unclean animal. It was a, a picture of the heathen. Jesus called the, the woman that came to him for help for her daughter that was be, that was possessed of the devil. You know, he called her a dog. And she said, well, doesn't the dogs eat from the crumbs at the bottom of the table? Well, with the sacrifice, and nowhere God tells you to offer a dog. Nowhere. Well, with the blood of the dog and the goat, you do know a goat is also a symbol of Satan worship. You have seen that goat pictured with, you know, in, in the Satanism. They would smear their foreheads with the blood. Well, isn't that interesting? They would smear their forehead with blood. But, as we're continuing here for YouTube, uh, it keeps getting messed up. We're just going to continue. Now, Lupercalia is celebrated February 14th, 15th. And on the Roman calendar, it's springtime. A very joyous occasion that the two youths and a sacrifice of an unclean dog in the Bible and a goat worshipped by Satan. Everyone who's in Satanic has that goat as their emblem. And the blood was smeared on their foreheads. Now isn't that great? You do know about the forehead in the Bible. You do know where Goliath got the rock, don't you? You do know where the two places that the mark of the beast will go, the right hand or the forehead. You do know where Indian women put their mark on their head, don't you? You do know where the Roman Catholic priest, should do that, puts the mark on Ash Wednesday. You do know the relevance of the Bible in the forehead. You know, supposedly, you know, that third eye. Wow, look at all the things we're looking at in, in Lupercalia. And we're not even up to Valentine's. This is, this is the foundation of Valentine's. 
and you got a dead dog, a dead goat, the blood going on a forehead, the same spot where the 666 will go. And we're going to blow away from YouTube because that just keeps following up. Satan does not want his word to get out there. Just let you know we keep having problems with the YouTube, so this will be broadcast only on the Sermon Network. All right, now the blood is on their foreheads. Now they were they were ventured to perimeter the city of Rome. We'll get more into this, but tapping women with the strips of the goat skin on their foreheads. Oh, look at that! Taking a piece of meat and smacking a woman on her forehead with it, and to produce the fact that she will now be fertile. Well, isn't that funny where the mark of the beast goes? Isn't that funny where Goliath was killed? Isn't that funny where your faith healers bend you right in the forehead and you're to be healed? You mean faith healers also have the Lupertilius holiday with a dead goat skin? Wow. By the way, this is where Mardi Gras comes in. See, they don't smack the women who lift up their shirts in Mardi Gras in Louisiana and New Orleans. They don't smack them with a piece of goat skin. They throw beads at them. Christian, have you walked away from Mardi Gras wearing beads? Have you during the time of Mardi Gras put beads on you? Did you put it on your little children to wear beads? You have taken the goat skin and you have followed Lupercalia 496 by the Pope of the Roman Catholic Assembly. I don't call it a church. It ain't nothing of a church. And you associate yourself with Mark chapter 4, verse 4, Mark 415, with birds being a symbol of love, where Jesus said birds are satanic. And take the gospel away from those who are listening. Now, as far as this thing goes on, it's to protect from infertility. Infertility. So if your wife can't get pregnant, go down and get some coat and smack her in the head with, 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 with the skin. Didn't that sound ridiculous? But this is the very foundation of Valentine's Day. That may be in your Baptist church that you as a born-again believer may say, Here, son, here, honey, here's a box of chocolates. I love you. That's why I'm studying the history of holidays, holy days. Let's drop the Y and put an I so it'll be nice and good. That's why I call this putting a wet cloth on holidays. Because I'm here to tell you the truth. Somebody else won't. And nobody else will tell you the truth. I will. I will tell you from scriptures. I am reading from their sources. And I am reading from the Bible. Now, Lupercalia. Well, I'm going to get this word all down. As far as the deity or the deities, it's unknown. No one knows what gods they worship. I can tell you what gods they worship. False gods. It's a festival of purification. Oh, wait a minute. Purification by a dog and a goat blood? Two naked men running around? Sounds like a Roman orgy. And you, Bible-believing Christian, wouldn't be associated with a Roman orgy with naked men running around. We ain't done yet. Purification? I thought the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ cleanses me from all sin. I thought the fact is on April 21st, 1987, when I asked Christ in my heart to save me, I thought it was the blood of Jesus, not the blood of a goat and a dog. That's purification, what it means, doesn't it? Are you washed in the blood? Well, heck, you should be reading on, July, on February 4th, Steve, you should be reading, Are you washed in the blood of the dog and goat? And fertility. Here, hon, let me smack you in the forehead with a piece of goat. Sounds stupid, but 
This is the foundation of Valentine's. The red heart, the little boy that shoots an arrow. We'll get into him too. But as for the two youths mentioned, they were naked. When did you see Jesus running around naked? When did you see James or John running around naked? No one was naked after he got drunk. Adam and Eve were naked and unclear and without sin and purification of God. Oh, purification and innocence. Then they found out after sin they were naked and they covered themselves. You read about King Saul when he had the devils in him.